Okay, let's talk about real numbers. Now, uh, real numbers are these type of numbers right here, okay? So the subset of real numbers are these numbers, and these are kind of uh, some examples of these particular numbers. Now, what I'd like you to do is to kind of, you know, do this little matching game. Um, take these numbers and match it to these numbers, okay? So uh, you should be able to kind of figure it out. I try to... Um, now, let me just say this much, kind of losing my frame of the thought here. Uh, some of these numbers can fit in multiple categories, but, you know, through the process of elimination, you're really going to be able to kind of match uh, this up pretty uh, closely. So uh, before we get started, let me just show you here what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you look at a number line, all right, here is a lovely number line. Here's zero. And then we have 1, we have 2, we have 3, we have negative 1, negative 2, and then et cetera, right? It goes to negative infinity this way and goes to positive infinity this way. All these numbers right here, we got fractions uh, in here, decimals, positive and negative fractions of decimals, and all these numbers here, uh, which are kind of used to working with, this is what we call the set of real numbers, okay? Um, and this is very, very important. And there's different types of real numbers, and the real numbers are made up of uh, different type of numbers. And this is exactly what uh, we're going to review here. And this is important stuff because you, you need to know these terms. So if you think you can match these guys up, I'm going to get uh, this out of the way. Go ahead and uh, do so. Of course, I'm going to go through this uh, uh, in just one second, but I want to give you a chance to think about it. And um, it's important that you know these uh, these words, right? We got irrational, integers, whole numbers, counting or natural numbers, rational numbers. Uh, so it's not just one of these things that you learn. You're like, okay, yeah, forget about that because I just need to know how to work with the numbers. Well, yeah, you need to know how to work with the numbers, but it is important that you uh, have a pretty good uh, understanding of the uh, description of what type of numbers in the real number system. So we're going to get to uh, this little exercise in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now that's a pretty bold statement. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses, math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching a pre-calculus here very shortly. Um, I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or Alex, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many others, uh, all those exams have a lot of math on them. Uh, so I can definitely help you prepare. Just go to my website and um, uh, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. Uh, so if you homeschool uh, and you're looking for a great homeschool math program, my program is uh, definitely something you should be checking out. And then obviously help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to learn math, now if you're not serious, just disregard this. But I take, you know, you're watching this video to learn something about math. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty sure you are serious. So if you're serious, then you got to do this, okay? You got to be serious about note taking. This is really the key to uh, being successful in anything, or at least especially mathematics. Uh, I've been teaching mathematics uh, for decades, and it's clear to me. Those students who are doing the daily work, taking outstanding notes, they almost uh, do very, very well, okay? And the reverse is true. Those students that like to look at their cell phone, talk to their friends, and do homework in another class, in their math class, you know, you can't be surprised when your grades look like this, okay? You got to be like, hey, there's no shortcuts. If there was, I would definitely uh, uh, tell you about them, but... You just got to do the daily work, uh, but as you're <clears throat> improving your notes, you can use my notes uh, to uh, study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's get to this. Now, uh, if you want to kind of mentally do this exercise or you just want to pause the video and you know write this on a, a piece of paper real quick, uh, what we're looking to do is... Um, you know, kind of like point, you know, these guys to the right, you know, the right uh, description, okay? All 
All right, so let's uh, let's start with um, we'll we'll go this way. We'll start with counting numbers. Counting now, counting numbers slash natural numbers are known as natural numbers or counting numbers, depending on how you uh, learned them. Uh, so, what are the counting numbers? Well, let's just draw a little hand here. This is a terrible hand. Let me see if I could do a little bit better. Let me see. Um, here's my thumb, and I got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's my thumb. All right, that's a pretty poor looking hand, but hopefully you get the uh, sense here. So if I'm counting, I'm using my little digits, right? This is where that word comes, uh, comes from, digits of our hands. So you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, I see, you know, I see one star, I see two stars, I see three stars. So I'm counting one, two, three. Uh, so the counting numbers or the naturally occurring numbers is what we actually see. We don't see zero, okay? Now, zero was a concept that was actually kind of invented. So the most basic numbers that we use that are naturally occurring is uh, things that start with one, okay? I see one car, I see two trees, I see uh, three deer, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, numbers starting from one, continuing on one, two, three, four, these would be the natural numbers, okay? So when I look at uh, these numbers here, I'm thinking, okay, well, I have negative five, one half, the, what's the one, only one that I can classify as a natural number? That would be four. Now, as I stated, some of these numbers fit uh, in multiple categories, but we're gonna just kind of go this, do this little uh, process of elimination. All right, so uh, with that being said, let's actually jump down to um, integers, okay? Well, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. Let's go to whole numbers, okay? Whole numbers, All right? This is a very, very important concept. So what are the whole numbers? Well, the whole numbers are nothing more than, but uh, other than they're the ca counting numbers or natural numbers, let's review that. One, two, three, four, et cetera. These are the counting numbers. But when we throw in that lovely zero, okay, in there, we get the whole number, uh, whole numbers. So uh, when you um, zero, having that zero is a very, that was a very, very important discovery. It wasn't always there, okay? So conceptually, this wasn't um, uh, around. But when someone figured out that, hey, you know, uh, when I'm looking in the natural world, I'm saying, you know what, how do I say I don't see any horses, or there are no trees over here. <laughs> we we need something that we can express this by, you know. And uh, the digits of our hands were like, you know, you know, what do you do? Well, we need something to to uh, we need a concept to uh, represent nothing or empty, right? And that is a zero. So when we add zero to our counting and natural numbers, we get the whole numbers. So let's go ahead and put that zero right over here with the whole numbers. Okay, so, uh, you know, now I've got this kind of going uh, pretty good. Uh, some of you are like, okay, if you want to think, to your, if you want to like finish up the, the rest of the stuff, you feel like, okay, I think I can answer the rest of them, definitely pause the video and see what you uh, remember. Okay, now let's move on to integers. Okay, so what are the integers? Well, the integers are effectively this. All right, so remember we had 0, 1, two, et cetera, these are the whole numbers, right? So this is one, two, this was the counting numbers and natural numbers. Then we throw in zero, and then all these guys are the whole numbers. So the whole numbers are right here, but if we take the negative of the whole numbers as well, these are positive, zero, and positive natural numbers, but if we take the negative of these guys, we have negative one, negative two, et cetera. All of these guys right here are integers. This is what the integers are, okay? So uh, when we uh, look at this, we're like, okay, which one of these is uh, an integer? Well, we have this lovely negative five right there that we could classify uh, as our integer. So four would be an integer as well, and zero would be an integer as well. But, you know, we're trying to figure out this a little uh, problem, you know, like a little Tetris uh, puzzle. We got to, okay, it's, you know, it's a process of elimination. So one, you know, um, if I used four for my 
integer, then I, you know, negative five, I would have been stuck with, you know, well, again, some of these go in different categories, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is the only way to kind of do this problem. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is the way um, we would have to answer it to get this little exercise correct. All right, so that leaves us with rational and irrational numbers. Okay, let's talk about rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Okay, well, rational numbers that are, are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, any number that can be expressed as a fraction, but there's a kind of a a, a, um, a little bit of a detail here that's important. It's not just a fraction, okay, because you're saying, well, isn't uh, 7 over the square root of 3? That's a fraction. Well, no, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, rational numbers are numbers that we can express as a fraction made up where the numerator and denominators are integer values, okay? So what does that mean? Well, my numerator and denominators have to be integers, so they have to be things like 5 over 8 could be a negative 5 over a negative 8 or negative 8 over 5. It doesn't make a difference. Um, it could be like 6. Six, uh, 6 by itself is also considered a rational number because that would be 6 over 1. Okay, so I can express this number as a fraction. Now, numbers like this, let's say 0.25, you say, oh, that's a decimal. Uh, what is that? Well, you know, I don't see decimals here. Well, this number can be expressed as a fraction, one-fourth, okay, where this is an integer and this is an integer. So this is classified as a rational number as well. So when I look at my lovely list here, which uh, numbers here, um, is a fraction made up of uh, integers. It is the one half, and there we go. That is our rational number. So that must mean that our square root of three is an irrational number, and that's absolutely uh, correct. Uh, numbers that we cannot express as a fraction um, made up of integers are what we call irrational numbers. So uh, when you go in, into your calculator and you take the square root of three, you're gonna get approximately 1.71, I believe. And then it's going to go on and on and on and on and on. Now your, your calculator window stops right there, but these digits continue on to infinity. Now, a good um, representation of an irrational number is a number that hangs out about this area right here, 3.14, very famous number. It's called pi, okay? So that's approximately 3.14. But this thing goes on, on and on and on and on and on and on. So the definition of an irrational number is that the digits... Uh, when they keep going, they don't repeat, okay, and they don't terminate. So in other words, a repeating decimal would be something like uh, 3.1414141414. This is a repeat. This is a repeating uh, pattern. But when we have something like 3.14, and I'm just going to make some stuff up, 1892370100. Uh, six, five, one, nine. Okay, this is like going on and on. You're like saying, well, when does the problem, when does this number stop? Well, it doesn't stop. You actually have to travel way out to infinity to get to the very end of the number. So there's no way we can write all this out. That's why we use symbols like this, okay, or this to represent all these uh, numbers that continue to go, okay? It's not rational, it's like irrational. And this is basically it. This is the real number system, okay? Again, these are all the type of numbers that are gonna be here on this real number line. Now, once you've mastered uh, the real number system uh, and you continue to learn mathematics, and I'm uh, mostly talking to those of you that are taking like maybe like an algebra course, uh, you'll eventually uh, exhaust this number system to the point of like, well, there's going to be problems where we can't, the solution to our um, um, answer, to our problems are on, are not in this number system. We're going to need another number system, and that's called the complex number system. And that's another discussion. So there are uh, more number systems other than the real number systems. But, you know, let's just master one number system at a time. And uh, this was a quick review uh, on the real number system. Now, if you got uh, all of these right, then I must give you, yeah, I can't just help it. I, I, I have to do it. I, I got to give you a happy face with a nice 1980s uh, level mohawk. 
Okay, with extra hairspray, we did use a lot of hairspray in our hair back in the 1980s. Um, it's probably pretty dangerous, okay, to use that much hairspray. But uh, anyways, I'm glad that uh, this generation of uh, folks don't use as much hairspray, right? It's probably good for the environment, but that's excellent. Okay, if you knew this right here, that uh, shows me that you're definitely taking great notes and you're understanding uh, this stuff, all right? These aren't trivial details. These are things that you need to know. All right, so if this little video helps you out, and if it was uh, useful to some matter, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos. I'm adding new stuff all the time. Basic to advanced mathematics. So, you know, if you like my teaching style, uh, that's why I make these videos, all right? My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Nobody should be failing math these days. If you're doing your part, taking great notes, talking to your teacher, if you need additional help, okay, there's so many resources out there. So if, uh, you know, you like my teaching style, let me help you, all right? Watch my videos on YouTube. I have tons of videos, different math topics, but my best, best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.